Once a Greek engineer received a request from his king to check the golden crown's purity. The easiest way to do this is by finding the crown's density and comparing with pure gold. This can be achieved by melting the crown into some standard shape whose volume can be easily measured. And when we divide the weight of the crown by this volume, we get its density. If this density is less than pure gold, it means the crown has impurities. And the problem is solved. But because it is the king's crown, he had to find a way to measure the crown's volume without harming it. Puzzled by this, he thought of taking a bath to calm himself and come up with some solution. When he got in his bathtub, he observed the level of water rising and instantly he knew he had found the solution to his problem. He can find the volume of the crown by submerging it in water and measuring the volume of water it displaces. The weight of the crown when divided by this volume gives its density. This density can then be compared with that of pure gold to check the integrity of the crown. He was so excited by this discovery, he ran to the streets, shouting Eureka! Eureka! not realizing he was naked. The engineer we are talking about is Archimedes and this is the famous Eureka story. But Archimedes found that implementing this is highly impractical because of the extreme accuracy required to calculate the volume of water displaced by the object. Thus, he came up with a principle which states that when a body is immersed in a fluid, it experiences a buoyant force equal to the weight of the fluid it displaces. And this principle is called the Archimedes principle which can be explained by using the formula buoyant force Bf is the weight of object in air minus the weight of object in water. He verified this by first balancing the crown against pure gold in air. The weight of the crown in air equals the weight of the gold bar. And after immersing it in water, he observed because the crown is not 100% pure, it has lower density compared to pure gold which causes the weighing scale to dip towards the gold bar, indicating the weight of crown in water is less than that in air. And the resulting difference in weight is shown on the scale which is the buoyant force Bf. Thus, we can conclude to make a ship float, the buoyant force exerted on the ship in the upper direction has to be equal to the weight of the ship. The smarter one might say, this only works in still water. What about waves and wind pushing the ship laterally? What prevents the ship from toppling in this situation? This can be answered by the concept of center of gravity and metacentric height. Center of gravity is the point where all the mass of the body is assumed to be concentrated. Following are the center of gravities for these general ships. Similarly, the center of gravity of a ship will be here and the buoyant force acting on the ship in upper direction keeping it afloat acts along the line of CG. But when the ship is tilted in one direction, the buoyant force also shifts. Now if we draw a vertical line along the buoyant force, the line intersects the CG line. This point of intersection about which the ship essentially rotates is called the metacenter of the ship and the distance from the center of gravity to this metacenter is called the metacentric height. There are three conditions which define the stability of any floating object on the basis of the location of metacenter with respect to its center of gravity. First, when the metacenter is above its CG, it is the most stable because when the ship tilts, the buoyant force acting along the metacenter also shifts, creating a restoring moment which acts in the anticlockwise direction, bringing the ship back in its original position of stability. 
On the other hand, let's assume the meta center is below its center of gravity. Now when the ship is tilted, the buoyant force acting along the meta center creates a moment in the same direction, which tilts the ship even more causing it to topple, which is the unstable condition. And finally, when both meta center and CG coincide with each other, there is no moment generated when the ship is tilted because the line of buoyant force acts along the CG of the ship. This is called the neutral condition. Thus, we can conclude, to make our ship float, the buoyant force exerted on the ship in the upper direction has to be equal to the weight of the ship. And to ensure that our ship is laterally stable, the meta center should be above its center of gravity, such that a restoring moment is created as soon as the object tilts, and higher the meta center, the more stable the ship becomes. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. Bye and see you in the next video.